This is the Emergency Medical Minute. Okay, so um, this is something that we see all the time, but it's probably time that we reviewed it again. So I saw a lady who had come in with um, kind of sound like flu symptoms for a few days, then started having some abdominal pain, um, then was having repeated episodes of nausea and vomiting, and then some pain more in the right upper quadrant. And her exam wasn't that impressive. She just had a little bit of epigastric and a little bit of right upper quadrant tenderness. Didn't think she needed imaging right then, but sent some labs. And her AST came back 9,700. Her ALT was like 8,300. Her Billy was six something. Um, and so I started talking to her a little bit more about her week beforehand. And she'd been taking anywhere from like 8 to 16 extra strength Tylenol a day for probably like six or seven days before that. I wanted to talk a little bit about Tylenol overdose. And when we think about it, usually we think about it an acute overdose in a suicidal patient. And then everybody knows to get the four-hour Tylenol level because regular Tylenol peaks about four hours after ingestion. So if you take a big bolus of Tylenol, that's your best point. And then there's the nomogram. You guys know that where you can look at the time from ingestion and what their milligrams per deciliter of their Tylenol level is and see if it's above or below the line. If it's below the line, probably aren't going to get into trouble. If it's above the line, 60% of those people will end up having hepatitis from that. Um, so a little bit of boringness for, we'll go back to biochem. So Tylenol is metabolized initially partly through the kidneys. It, it can become sulfonated and it can also become, um, I have to put that down, um, with a gluco, oh, gluconeuronidation is what it's called. And both of those go out through the kidney. But then if it's metabolized through the P450 system in your liver, then it can become this thing called NAPQI. And that is the toxic metabolite. So um, we give NAC and acetylcysteine, and the reason, or cysteine, the reason we give that is because that increases glutathione and also helps push that toxic uh, pathway a different direction so that it, you're not, it's not going to the liver. So the toxic dose for adults is 7.5 is the minimum for a 24-hour period that you should think about. For kids, it's 150 milligrams per kilo. But if they're young, like one to six, they can go up to 200 milligrams per kilo and not have any toxic effects. Why? Because their P450 system isn't that good. So they don't, they break more of it down in the kidney and it doesn't go to the toxic pathway. Somebody like this lady, she, her, you get a level just to get one, but the levels are useless because she doesn't have a single bolus. She has a chronic overdose. So those people, you're just going to treat empirically. Even if they're already in liver failure, like she was, you still treat them because um, not only does NAC help mess the pathway up, but it also increases blood flow to the hepatocytes. So it can actually help people avoid liver failure, even if they already have some toxic effects. So you still give them NAC, and that is you know, 140 milligrams per kilo for the first dose, and then 70 milligrams per kilo. You do it every four hours for 72 hours, um, and then just follow their LFTs. They, most people that have a sudden, like a bolus overdose, they won't have any symptoms till at least 24 hours. So um, if they're a suicidal patient or somebody that you think took too much or a kid that got into meds, they may look just like a rose for at least 24 hours, and so don't let that lead you astray. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.